Hi there. If you've got version 9 and you've got excited about the new applique toolbox with the new applique tools and the export cutting file, then this video is for you. The export cutting file works really well with all-in-one designs and I already have a video up about how to use it and the advantage of it is that you can pre-cut your applique pieces in your cutting machine and lay them in place as you do the embroidery which saves a lot of time if you have a cutting machine um, even so you can use it to create um, easy to use patterns to cut your pre-cut your applique pieces with a pair of scissors rather than trying to cut away the excess fabric in the hoop the unfortunate part is with machine files, that is embroideries you've um, purchased online that are meant to be loaded into your machine for stitching, don't work as well with the export cutting file. But I'm here to show you a few tricks on how to get the export cutting file to work with those machine files. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a machine file, a machine applique file. So I'm coming up here to insert embroidery. Now I downloaded this set of designs, they were free, and this one is an applique, so I'm just going to use that. It's not particularly well digitized, but it will serve to do the purpose. So I'm going to select that and open it. And, ah, sorry. Um, I'm going to just go OK. I'm going to delete that because I wanted to show you something on the way through. So we'll just delete that and do it again. So I'm going to select the design and before I open it I'm going to make absolutely sure in the options tab down here that I am going to convert stitches into object shapes. They will be a grade C design that is, they won't be as good as all-in-one designs created in the software. But if we leave stitches as individual stitches, we can't edit anything. So we need to um, convert, get, let the software convert the stitches as best as it can into objects. So just click on OK there, and then you can open the design and go OK. Now if we look in the colour film we can see applique objects sort of. We've got an, a running stitch outline here. Um, they're very pale because they've used light colours for those under stitches but the next one is actually a um, tack down stitch. I will just ungroup. might be able to show them to you a little bit better that way. No, they're still not. Oh, they're in color blocks. Let's go to individual objects. So if we come down here, then we have here, we have the outline. No, they're still not showing up very well. And you can see here that the tack down is actually in pieces. It's not all one object either. So um, even though it's converted it as best as it can into um, objects for you to edit, and you can, they are editable, um, it's you're not getting nice clean lines for your um, to use the export cutting file the ones we need are the this one here I think let me just go out of true view so I can see what's selecting I can't even see where that's selected to be honest I think no I think that must be just a, a fabric placement here we go this is the one we need all right, so if we go zoom in close, we can see there's a pink line running down here. So this is the placement line for this piece in here. And it comes up here. It is actually very close to the edge of this satin stitch. I would have preferred it be closer to the center, but nevertheless, it's there. It does actually come up here and into this point and then back down and around the green shape and back along here and up there. So let's see if we can convert that piece alone into an SVG with our export cutting file. So if we left click on there 
we only want to um, there are no applique shapes so that's grayed out it will it has recognized this design as having embroidery objects now so it will export embroidery shapes but we don't want embroidery shapes because of what that will do is give us a, a thin um, it'll go both sides of the satin stitch and use that as a shape and uh, you won't actually get a line as such and it will give you this shape here and this dark shape here we actually want um, to export the selected object only which was a line so if I click on that now I've got nothing because it can't see that that's even a shape it's certainly not an applique shape so I've got all these options here grayed out so there's a problem with that line it's not being recognized as a shape and the usual problem is that it's not one single outline. So let's just um, drag that off. I'll select it and have a good look at it. Um, I'll have to cancel this. And it is selected so I can drag it off. And if we look very closely, we've actually got a gap here where the object is not closed. And so therefore, um, it's just a running stitch. It's not a shape. And so the software can't create an SVG file from it. But I'll just undo. So that goes back to where it's supposed to be. Um, if you've got a shape like that, that's open and you want it to be a closed shape, then we have a tool in the Banana software that will do that for us. So we know if we look down here that we have a gap between here and here, and it's a straight gap so it would feel quite happily oh wait on there's actually a little bit that goes up there so first of all I'm going to go to the reshape tool while it's selected and I'll get my nodes and then I can move that node so that it's pointing towards the other node I want to close this gap here and I don't want a big step there okay so now that's there I can actually go back to the select tool and go up to the edit in the top menu not the edit toolbox the edit in the top menu and I can close the curve with a straight line so this is called a curve even though it's got square corners in some spots but we're going to close it with a straight line so if I left click on that you can see now this has become a closed object that's closed over so now let me see what happens when I go to export cutting file so I can left click there and I can I want to check the box that says export selected objects only I don't want to select the whole design so we've gone there and now it will let me export that scalable vector graphic as a scalable vector graphic so I'm going to call this just test uh, actually test fish and I've already done it so um, you can call it anything you like um, when you're exporting um, when you click on export it will do it now it's gone to the default and in my other video about how to use that tool you'll know so now if I go to art canvas I can actually have a look at that file and see what it looks like so I'll go through to art canvas and I will load the graphic because it is a graphic and if I go to my libraries and my machine uh, my cutting files it should be in there that's the default and I've got a test fish embroidery SVG here so if I click on that I can import it and I just hit enter because I want it to come in at the, at the actual size it's come on top of the actual embroidery image there but there you go you have a nice clean cut line to send to your um, cutting machine it is an SVG so if your machine reads a different format you'll have to convert it again but if your machine reads SVG you're good to go it's a hairline so if your machine has trouble with hairlines you could increase the width sorry here increase the width ever so slightly um, if necessary but other than that it is a perfect closed shape 
So that was that shape and that we didn't encounter too many problems closing off that curve because we only had to close a straight line. But what other problems can occur? So let's go back to the embroidery. And this time we're going to select the shape for the mouth and the front part of the fish. The applique shape for that. I just have to find it. Might be easier if I go to color blocks. And yes, there it is. Okay. And I can even see now in here that there is a gap up here in this line as well. So that's not going to work either unless I close that gap. So let's, that's up the top here. So let's zoom in and I think you'll be able to see, yes, that I've got it and it's coming down here and stopping there. It started here. So we've got this gap here. So we could probably close that with a straight line too because if I run my... Um, cursor across there I'm looking at a straight line so let's try and close that gap all right so it's selected and we go to edit and close curve with a straight line and nothing happened so there's another problem so how I my next port of call is to look at the reshape tool and see what's going on with nodes in case there's a problem with the nodes. So let's click off. Uh, let's undo just in case it did something in the background so that we know that it hasn't done anything. Um, and let's go to the reshape tool. And we can see here that we've actually got these big blue squares which are not the normal yellow square nodes. And there are no curved nodes. So that tells me that this object did not really convert into an object. Um, it stayed as stitch data, which is quite strange, but that's what's happened. So um, I'm going to select it again, and I'm going to go to the object properties. And when you open the object properties, it cannot see that it's even an outline stitch. If I click on the outline tab, there's no outline type in there. So it is not registering as an object. And that's why it won't work. So we'll just go back to the... Uh, sorry, we'll go to the outline stitch. No, we won't. We'll close that. And while it's selected, I'm going to come down here and click on the outline, single outline to convert this to a single outline. So I've clicked on that, and now when I go to the object properties, it has turned into a single outline. It's recognizing it as an object. So I can go OK. And now I can come up here to the edit menu item and close the curve with a straight line. That's closed this curve off. And now while that's selected, I can go into my applique toolbox and export a cutting file for that shape as well. So as you can see with machine files they are a bit tricky. Some objects convert better than others. The software just does the best job it can but there I've just tried to show you that that will now work if I export selected objects only. I can export that there is a check box there and it's highlighted so I could do that if I wanted to. Um, so I just wanted to bring up a couple of things you might encounter if you're working with machine files. That is your EXPs for your Beninas, your PEZ for your brothers, your Jeff for your Janomis and so on. Hus and VP3 for your Huskanas and, and um, FAFs. So um, I do have a video about the difference between machine files and all-in-one files. It's always better if you can possibly work with an all-in-one file, then it's better to do that. But we don't always have uh, all-in-one files that we've created ourselves and you cannot usually purchase an all-in-one file. They usually only sell machine files because they don't want you using their design to edit in any major detail so I hope that's been helpful so so that you can work with any machine files you may have 
And if you have any further questions about the software, please don't hesitate to comment below or contact me via my website. There'll be a link in the description below and I'll put a link to the video about the machine files versus um, all-in-one files. Thank you.